Are you struggling to get the right response from your Spring Cloud microservice when posting messages to a Kafka broker? It can be really frustrating when your code doesn't behave as expected. But don't worry, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to tackle how to make your code wait for a success or failure response before returning. I completely understand how annoying it is when your application doesn't return the expected status after making a request. You're not alone in this. Many developers face similar challenges when working with asynchronous calls in Java. Let's dive into the specific question at hand. One user recently asked, how can I ensure my Spring Cloud microservice waits for a response from Kafka before returning the status to the caller? They provided some code, and it seems like the callback isn't allowing the main thread to wait for the result. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what's happening here? When you send a message to Kafka using the listenable future, the operation is asynchronous. This means that your code continues executing without waiting for the result. To handle this properly, we need to ensure that the response is only sent after the callback has completed. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a quick tip that can help you manage asynchronous calls more effectively in your applications. To ensure the user receives the submit status after the Kafka message is sent, we need to modify the code to wait for the result of the send operation. First, the user should use the listenable futures get method to block until the operation completes. Next, the user should handle the success and failure cases based on the result obtained. This means updating the response object accordingly after the get method is called. After updating the response object, the user should set the appropriate HTTP status based on the response status. This ensures that the caller receives the correct status code. Finally, the user should return the response entity with the execution response and the determined HTTP status. This completes the process of waiting for the Kafka operation to finish before responding. Fun fact, did you know that the first message sent over the internet was a simple LO? It was supposed to be login, but the system crashed. Just like that, we want to avoid crashes in our code. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach suggested by another user is to block the calling thread until the result is available. They recommend using the future.get method to achieve this. That's it for that response. Let's explore another one. An alternative approach suggested by another user is to use the get method on the listenable future. This allows you to wait for the result of the send operation before returning a response. This method will raise an exception on failure instead of invoking the on-error callback, which can simplify error handling. Here's the quick tip I promised. Always consider using synchronization mechanisms like countdown latch or completable future when dealing with asynchronous operations. It can save you a lot of headaches down the road. And there you have it. By implementing a countdown latch, your Spring Cloud microservice can now wait for a response from Kafka before returning the status. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button for more tips, and don't forget to check out our next video for more insights on asynchronous programming.